This here is a lager, but it's not just any lager. It's brewed with Nova Lager Yeast. Let's have a chat. I'm always skeptical about lager yeasts that say they can ferment fast. I've never really had a clean quite yeast. They can get pretty clean, but they don't taste like a lager yeast. And the California lager yeast, while they're nice, uh, I prefer a, a more traditional lager yeast. 3470 can be okay, but let's talk about speed and cleanliness of ferment. You can ferment that a little bit warmer, a little bit faster, but when you do that, I don't think it brings over those, some of those classic lager qualities. This beautiful looking beer right here, fermented in just a few days. It's really hard to believe. It is a hybrid lager yeast. There's no sulfur whatsoever. It doesn't even produce it when it's fermenting. Here's a little bit of the promo from Lalmond. What's amazing about this yeast is yes, it's a true bottom fermenting lager yeast. It's got a much larger temperature range than a normal lager yeast, 10 to 20 degrees. It is not genetically modified, but it ferments really quick, faster than your typical lager strains, actually faster than some ale strains, but the resulting beer will still be very, very clean with extremely low diacetyl and no H2S, which is your rotten egg gas or sulfur. You can see here in this diagram, this is at 12 degrees, but it's fermented much faster than Diamond and even faster than Nottingham. Here you can see the H2S production between the different yeasts, and you can see it's non-existent in the Nova Lager. It really is amazing. This is very interesting. I think you're gonna like it. I do. Let's have a little look on how I made this beer and we'll have a chat about it. There's about 20 left in there, about just over 30 in there because of the water expansion. Doesn't want much water, but we'll see how we go. Got two mil of lactic and some salts. It's approximately four grams of each. It's a little bit different, but four Epsom salt, four ca uh, calcium chloride, four gypsum. I was brewing an IPL, or what I like to call a New Zealand style lager, a little bit hoppy and very tasty. I went with a simple grain bill and I want to thank Bintani for supplying the Joe White signature ale malt I used in this. And I added 500 grams of Munich and 500 grams of oats. I went for a simple 65 degree Celsius mash, which is 149 degrees Fahrenheit. I went for 75 minutes to make sure I got everything out of that malt. Probably just going to mash out now. And then I mashed out for 10 minutes at 76 degrees Celsius. I sparged with about 15 and a half litres of water. I wanted to use some of the hops that Bintani supplied me, so I bitted it 60 minutes with 25 grams of Select Spalt, and I added 25 grams of Zamba at one minute, and 25 grams of Zamba for a hop stand at 95 degrees for 20 minutes. And I've got 25 grams of Zamba. Going in, which isn't much, but you, you've got to test these hops before you start throwing hundreds of grams. I found that out ever since the Rewaka episode. <laughs> then I'll dry hop with another 50. I was looking for an original gravity of around 1050. I was a few points up here, I got 1053. I was no chilling this batch, so I put it in a cube and we'll pitch the yeast the day after. Always do that. It's nice and clear down there. It's looking lovely. And the next day I put the now chilled wort into my fermenter. I then added the 20 gram satchel of Nova Lager yeast I had.
I'll whack the lid on, got it ready to put in the fermenting fridge. I will put a spunding valve on and I will cover that hole up a bit so it's reading inside and not the outside temp. Keep in mind though that I'm not actually using this but it is a backup and it will be reading on the screen because that's the built-in and that's the rat pill on the inside because I'm running by the rat pill that I put in. Now I've only just put them in so there was, is going to be a little bit of a difference. And my and I, it's the first time I've used this pill and I didn't really have time to do a proper calibration on it. So it's set to minus three of default. So they could equalize out very different than what it says up here, but I'll take that into account if it does. And I thought I was gonna to have to take it out to use that, but I'm not at this stage. So I can put that on any time though. You don't have to put that on now at all. And I'd have more room if I turn the fermenter around. But I wanted it set like this, at least for now. That's not till later. The best way of setting your spunding valve is not off the unit and elsewhere. You're best off putting it in place, putting some pressure in and setting it on the unit. This is simply because you can easily bump that. You only have to bump it a little bit and then you'll put it out and that might not be good. So I've had the pressure in there before. I put it in. I've still left a touch in there. There's no way that that... 0.1 of PSI or whatever it is, uh, is going to affect these yeast esters at all. Um, you have to be right up over 15 to be, you know, start even affecting any esters, in my opinion. So, but just in case, I, I'd normally just leave it at five, because that's about what I ferment and pressure at. Now that is still set at five. All I did was let the gas out of there for the naysayers about pressure fermenting and esters and things but I've never had that problem in all the years I've been pressure fermenting and as you know that's been a very long time things look a bit grubby but it's just sanitizer and things dried on it it is at 15 still I'll probably leave this an hour or two just to help get that yeast nice and active and I'll come back and put it down to 12 before it takes off all right it is the next day now it's just after lunch, it hasn't even been in 24 hours yet. Now, as it was 15 yesterday and I was going to drop it down to 12, and I decided I didn't want to shock it that much, and, you know, I've had a beer at 10 and I've had a beer at 20, so I thought 14 might be a good temp, so I've set it at 14. I think this yeast is really trying to warm it up, because it's staying in that uh, 14 and a half. And we've dropped six points already. Six points. It is a hybrid lager yeast, but that's amazing. That's that's faster than you know, especially at fourteen. Noddy or or you know, wouldn't even do that. So that's a bit crazy. Well, let's quickly look at the ferment. You can see here it was about 10 p.m. on October the 18th and the starting gravity was at 1.053. And by the 20th, and in two days, it was down to 1.025. And that's where I like to bump my yeast temperatures, somewhere between you know 10.25 and 10.20. And as this was going so fast, I knew by the morning it would have been under the 10.20, so it was time to bump it. I bumped it up two degrees to 16 degrees. Now the chart's a little deceiving here, but at October 22 at 7.02 is when I pulled it out to dry hop. It was at final gravity, and I can dry hop at final gravity in my conical, no worries at all. So that's where I pulled it out of the fridge. So I dry hopped out of the fridge. It was really cold in the garage. There was nothing to worry about. And after a few days of dry hopping, I added it back into the fridge and crash chilled it. I wanted to use the fridge to crash chill another beer I'd been fermenting. But you can clearly see there, I went from pitching to final gravity in four days. So as I said, I'd pulled it out of the fridge. I dry hopped using the hop bong with 50 grams of Zamba hop. It was supplied by Bintani. I flushed the hops with some CO2. It doesn't look like much, but there's about 50 grams in there. And put the hops into the fermenter and put it aside. Just let it sit there for a couple of days. 
I give it a nudge every now and then. After that, I put it in the fridge, crash chilled it, and kegged it. There was no lagering time at all. So yeah, this beer was done in less than a week. There's no sulfur. There's no awful lager smell. Yet, there's these lager qualities that are there. The crispness, uh, the, the sort of dryness that a lager yeast can give. Now, when I was at the a and HC conference, I had two there. There was one fermented at 10 degrees and one fermented at 20, around about there. I think they were very different, different properties. Uh, one was a little fruity, uh, and that was the one at 10 degrees. I'm not sure if they messed up <laughs> the 10 degree and the 20 degree one or what, because you would think at the hotter temperatures you might get some more fruitiness out of it. Maybe the, the was a different batch. I'm not sure if it was exactly the same batch of beer, uh, you know, from the same uh, double batch or whether they did two uh, separate batches. But as I said in earlier in the video, I did this at 14 and it was down to the 1025 where I always bump uh, yeast in a couple of days. It was unbelievable. I was going to try it at 12, but I went in a little bit warm when I pitched the yeast. So I'm extremely happy with this beer. I'm gonna try it again, and probably try it again and again. I can't wait for it to be available everywhere. I gotta thank Kegland. They did get a test packet in and they split it up and I was lucky enough to get some. And that's how I got the yeast for this. It was 20 grams. It was 20 grams in a six gallon batch, which, you know, that's not even double or two packets of a normal lug yeast, where I'd usually use two, three, sometimes even four if the yeast is getting a bit old. 20 grams was in this, so you know, you'd probably use two packs. Two packs is always better. Better too much than too little, always. I really hope this is in the shop soon because I want to play with it more and I'm guessing you guys will too. It's just a beautiful yeast. Lager, quick, no sulfur, none of that other junk that comes with long dacetal rests. It's a beauty. <laughs> Cheers, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Press like if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. There's tons of my viewers that aren't subscribed. I'm not sure why it's, it's free. You just gotta press the subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks to my patrons, because without them, these videos couldn't happen. If you haven't seen my Patreon, there's a link down below in the description again. Go and check it out. It's only a couple of bucks or as much as you like to give and you'll get an extra video a week and a few other extra things here and there, longer versions of videos. And it helps me to be able to keep making these videos. Thanks very much. Take it easy. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Look at that. Head still pumping. Can't complain about that. Cheers.